no bells, manos on the racing. And I'm here today with an originator of the quote unquote hyper pop scene from 2020, a pioneer of many sounds and influence. And in my opinion, one of the great artists of the past few years, Quinn, what's good? Yo, I'm in the building, man. It took a lot to get here. <laughs> <laughs> it's Tuesday, right? It's Tuesday. Yo, it's a crazy ass activity for a Tuesday. I'm not gonna lie. Unemployed motherfuckers at like 5 p.m. on a Tuesday. That's me. I'm unemployed motherfuckers. But yo, what's good? That's me too. Yo, yo, <laughs> turn up, turn up. Hell yeah. That's a great segue. How's the summer been for you? You're unemployed. What else is new? Bro, so. Um, what the fuck? Yo, <laughs> <laughs> yo. What, what, Smino what, is playing from what's my What's your phone. ringtone? Oh, that's. I mean, no, that's not my ringtone. It was just randomly playing. Oh, nice. Yo. But. My summer, it's been pretty chill, honestly. I spent like a lot of it. Um, I spent a lot of it in a relationship, but it was still pretty dope because like I spent like a lot of my summer doing shit, especially bouncing from like Atlanta, uh, with like my adventures with Dorian and shit. Uh, this I discovered rave culture, which is amazing. Um just growing up really like that's the that's the brutally honest answer he's like it's it's just been a summer of growing up especially on this new york trip and on the trip previously with that i took to minneapolis because i did like first trips traveling alone type shit but yeah you, you're in new york now this is for a concert what else are you doing here basically just like locking in it was originally for having a good time, you know, seeing everybody, meeting them for the first time, doing whatever. But ever since we all came here, we've been mad busy. Just, like, I've, I've, I haven't been as busy as I'd like to be because I keep forgetting my fucking laptop everywhere I go, which I'm not going to make that mistake in the future. I'll fill up my bag full of uh, cans, like spray cans, and just like completely leave no room for the laptop even though i don't even use like three of the spray cans that i pack so it's just like wasting space but yeah. whatever though you know what i mean um i'm still getting shit done because i had like beats already made it's mostly production for people like you know such as mo Beretta. hopefully getting some shit in with hardo Fallium because we've been speaking recently um just basically oh loser table everyone everyone in all of us in Nova are, you know, we trying to come together with Lizard Table and all that, you know what I mean? Can't say too much, though, kind of a private operation. It feels very different from the Nova gang that I remember a few years ago. Um, I mean, some of the members, there's still a lot of overlap, but I feel like the sound has changed a lot. You know, you've, you've had your time in and out of the group. Uh, yeah. You rejoined earlier this year. Um, I guess we can start there. Like, what made you want to rejoin Nova Gang? What made me want to rejoin Nova was I started to veer back towards like having heavily inspired trap production. I figured that I had an artistic vision that was similar to like Nova, and I was like, damn, I started missing being in Nova and like being around them and even speaking to them, interacting with them, or just, like, like being around in the community at all. I felt like I was drifting away. Like, I knew I was doing my own thing and everything, but I don't know. It kind of just felt only after that, having no sense of community. So I decided to, you know, get back into shit and start working with people more because, I don't know, there's more fun in that. It feels more fulfilling. if I'm reminding people I exist, participating yeah. in society, yeah. you know. Feels like it's what I'm supposed to do. Uh, yeah. So yeah. in general, I just, I don't know. I, you know, I miss them. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Yeah. It seemed also, and for context, Quinn lives in Fort Benning. You still live there, right? Yeah. I still live there. Yeah. I still live there. Yeah. So you were talking, we were talking last year when I visited you about the community you sort of were finding there specifically and distancing yourself from some of the, uh, I guess, online artists that you've been working with beforehand mm -hmm. i guess how, how has life changed there in the last year or so like how do you feel like you're drifting from those people or do you feel like you're trying to move out or like what's what's the vibes everybody i told you about 
and everybody we was with, like, just all that. I don't hang with none of them no more. And that's mainly – shout out Jared, though. I know you, you might remember Jared. Shout out Jared. Um, he's still the homie, um, him and his big brother. But everyone else, though, like, I don't hang out with them no more because I felt like just having friends from high school was dragging me down because I don't know all the connections I had had some sort of negative connotation to them because of the decisions that I made, like, earlier in the year. So, like, I don't know. I, like, ba- I, I don't know. I used to be, I used to be, like, an asshole to people because, like, I was going through shit and they didn't understand. And knowing them, it, it came to a point where knowing the people held me back. So I just kind of, like, I was like, all right, cool, I'm going to graduate and just like distance myself type shit. Not out of like, I don't want to talk to y'all anymore. Just out of like, I think this chapter and our friendship is over. Like, I think we should part ways. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, totally. <clears throat> so, yeah, I've just been make, getting more acclimated to local people, uh, like local skaters, local writers. Especially with me going up to Atlanta, quote, kicking it with Dorian uh yeah. getting to know people up there you know it's all cool shit though like not gonna lie like crazy stories but cool crazy stories you know for sure um one of them being like you remember that night at the forest of course that, that shit like i was like nonverbal for most of that night because i was so like out of it bro <laughs> i was tired i was high yeah. like it was you remember like it was a moment where it was a long moment where we were just standing next to each other and i was just dead silent staring <laughs> off into space like yeah yeah for context this was a stop cop city event shout out stop cop shout city. Out, yeah. important um movement to protect a forest in atlanta that's being threatened uh by atlanta police they're trying to build a massive uh base there for training and shit yeah, there was a forest rave that we all went to, and it was, it was uh, I think Polo was supposed to perform Polo Perks, and I found out, like, last minute that Dorian was going to DJ, and Quinn was just going to be there, so I was like, I'll just, I'm going to pull up, I don't care, like, and it was at, like, I think, I think, I think Polo only went on at, like, 12.30 at 12 night or 12.30 at night, most of the people already left. And it was, like, you have to understand, but it was, it was like people deep there, in the woods, you have to, like, follow these train tracks was, to get there. It was a train that was coming, like, every 15 to 30 minutes. Like, like <laughs> yeah, they they really hid that shit. So it was right beneath, yeah. like right beneath a like bridge, like a railway bridge. It was it was dope though. Like yeah, no. definitely one of the most like peculiar nights. Very peculiar. <laughs> yeah. How has your relationship to just like friendship as a concept changed the past couple of years? I appreciate friendship now. Now I appreciate friendship more than like any connection really, because it was a it was a fat period of time where. I just wouldn't respond to people or, like, their text messages. I just air people constantly. Like, they'd send seven, eight messages. I wouldn't respond. Yeah. Sometimes still happens. And, uh, you know, of course people just stop talking to you that way. And I was like, damn, I wonder why people are stopped talking to me. Like, I wonder why. So yeah. <laughs> I had to start reaching out uh, to people and, like, I don't know. It's it's giving me a different like outlook because I never I never mustered up the courage to like reach out to people myself. I don't know why. I've always been like so introverted that I'd wait for people to come to me. And I guess coming to other people, if you want to talk to somebody, it's, like text them, see what they're up to, stuff like that. This is all like basic communication skills that I should have learned. That like anxiety stopped me from learning at a young yeah. ass age. So learning it like just now is amazing yeah. i think i don't blame you either i feel like it's just hard when you're so kind of known online and like you don't know where the parasocial begins and the friendship ends and vice versa like there's these lines are so blurred and you don't even know who to check in on sometimes like exactly what what is our relationship even like when people speak to me i listen out for certain tones because it's certain like you know, you, you can tell when someone's promotionally speaking to you and when they want to just, like, kick it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, like you can tell a businessman apart from a regular person. And, like, I really watch for that in people. Not that if you are, like, on some business shit, it's a red flag. I just know when there's a time for it and when there isn't. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, it's a whole lot of shit you got to look out for because a lot of people want to, 
you know, just anyone would have to look out for it because anybody's trying to take advantage of anybody. But, you know. So you just played Market Hotel with Nova Gang. It was an interesting show to me because you played a lot of your new shit and then you would intersperse just these deep, quote unquote, classic Quinn songs in there. And those moments always kind of, they're really fun, but also kind of caught me off guard because it's like music from such a different era of your life and music career. So I'm curious, like, what your relationship is like to performing those songs today. I don't want them any friends first place. Uh, okay, I'm cool, et cetera. Yo, they like to hear them. <laughs> I mean, uh, they're fun to perform. Um, there's definitely a certain few songs that I just would not perform because it's just not me. But the ones that do have at least the slightest relativity to what I make now, I will still perform. Yo, some nigga, like, came on stage on some hardcore show shit. Yeah. And, like, jumped off that bitch three times, and they caught him each time. Like, (laughs) they are, like, they had a whole, like, they had a whole proper pit going. Like, they had this shit open. I've never seen so many little, like, white boys slash they thems going crazy to Sexy Red. That was, like... An insane you moment. talking about that uh, ski year remix? Yeah, that shit was cold. Casper put me on to that. Like, <laughs> yeah. that, yo, I think Days played it. I didn't get to see him turn it up. I was like in the green room sharing cheeses with everybody, but cheeses, cheeses. We had a box full of cheeses that was gone in sixty seconds. Cheeses are the, are the snack, That's bro. Like, it was the green room snack. What, what, I guess. Let, let me ask you this: What's the what's the Nova Gang rider like? When you you know the riders when you like ask people for like Nova shit. Gang rider? Yeah, yeah. One of the largest bottles of Casamigos you can find, and that's not only for us. Most of that, I'd say, like sixty percent of that is for Casper. <laughs> that's Mister Casamigos, bro. He, he strikes me as a Casamigos type, that's bro. Like- <laughs> In your set, you played a lot of your more recent music past six to eight months since the self-titled. Mm-hmm. Um, you played music from maybe my favorite one, Interstate 185. Yeah. And I really like that tape because there's a song in there called Camry Music. And as a fellow Camry owner, I, I, I play that song in my car a lot. So, Bro. So I just want to say that. 2011, great Toyota Camry. That's the car I drive. It's my Yo, that shit really is oh, as old as 2011. Because my mom used to drive that, and I grew up, like, driving in the backseat of it, and now I'm whipping that bitch. Like, it's crazy. I guess, what does Camry music mean to you as, like, a, if you had to make it into a genre, what would that sound like? Nolan B. Rowland tapes. That's about it. (laughs) That's a crazy answer. If you know, you know. Where were you, I guess, mentally, spiritually when you were making that music? Not just that tape, but just the past few tapes, which I feel... I don't know if I'm overgeneralizing, but sort of have this uh, this similar kind of almost soulful but trap sound to them. Shout out to 454 because he showed me like a way, like listening to his music, he showed me a way that I could do this whole sampling shit and still do the same shit that I was doing before and like maintain a stable image around it, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, lots of 454 inspo, especially because, like, I don't know. He was just getting me through shit because I was going through all that bullshit with my ex. And I was like, yo, this joyous-ass music, like, let me turn up real quick. You know what I mean? And uh, it got me back into the shit that I'm doing now. And I'm probably going to keep doing it just in, like, different crazy ways. At that time, not going to lie, that was, a like, those times where I was making mixtapes, like, I was just locking in on some, like, coping mechanism shit because those are, like, rough months. But it worked because, like, so much good shit came out of it, and I'm happy with it, you know what I mean? Yeah. It feels a lot more kind of visceral and, and almost, like, part. Is, you're, you're, it sounds like you're just partying on those songs sometimes, too. Like, the lyrics are just, like, about white dudes doing coke sometimes and like just just like random bullshit like think th- like reality rap I, I don't know if it's real but reality rap just but. be like the random shit i stumble and go, yeah. go across like this is this is like southern living like you remember all that shit that i told you when we first linked up yeah shit got like 10 times crazier since then like i remember i was kicking it in my homie crib and one of the old homies the old homies walked in he did like 30 to 50 whippets like back to back on the couch <laughs> and oh, we was just it was just like six to seven of us just like standing around him like 
Oh no. You done? <laughs> like just like observing? The, yeah, just observing. It's not a it's not a big living room. So we was just kinda like standing there like, yo, is this dude gonna die on the couch? <laughs> like I was sitting there perfectly like, yo, we're gonna watch like someone die today. And he was just like, Oh no, I'm good and then he finished and then I'm like, yo, like you did this with no problem. He was like, Every time I do them, I gotta see how like how many I can take in one sitting. And I never spoke to him again. You have an album coming? You have anything bigger or are you still in mixtape mode? I'm I'm both. Like I'm always in the mood to make mixtape tracks because those are like short, shorter. But I wanna reserve time for album mode because I wanna come up with another album considering one day Jesse called me and he's like, I proposed an idea. And I was like, what's the idea? He does this a lot and they're all really good ideas. So I'm like, okay, what's up? And he's like, I think you're in a time where people would like to hear another full length album from you because you're in another transitional period, just like how you've made albums about them every time. I think you have a lot of material that you can put together and come up with a nice full length album if you put your everything into it. And I was like, damn, you're actually pretty right. Like I could create some like pretty like sick and dope shit if I lock in. You released your last album on Dead Air, uh, a label that I know you're kind of parted ways with earlier this year. Mm -hmm. Do you see yourself returning to Dead Air to put that album or are you in a place where you want to move independently more so? I might, honestly. Um, like, Jesse's uh, Jesse's changed a lot in his ways of, like, uh, how he works, and so have I because, you know, time has passed. He's figured out multiple compromises and not really – no, not compromises because nothing's, like, wrong or nothing like that, but multiple, uh, like – ways that we could work together if I was ever interested and I would still maintain the autonomy that I have now. That's why we're still pretty close because like Dead Air and mainly him, he's he's like, he's here to like help out whenever I need it because, you know, that's just how we've always been. We've always helped each other out. No reason really, just out of the goodness of our hearts, I guess. But yeah. yeah. One thing I will say about your mixtapes though, before we move on, is that I, it's cool to me that you find ways to kind of call back to like past eras on them occasionally like maybe i'm misinterpreting this but i was listening to like 80 miles per hour for instance and that song you like i think you're just quoting duop kane in the chorus and like you always talked about fucking with duop kane since like the early days so um like that's an example i think but i don't know maybe i'm misinterpreting it how'd you know <laughs> 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 I'm a duop stand. What can I say? <laughs> uh, yo, yo, high key. That, Cause that song, ever since that song, you know what song I'm talking about too. Ever since that song dropped, uh, I just had that hook stuck in my head. Like I'm making plays. Yeah, yeah, bro. Exactly. Like, yeah, you can hear it. It's so obvious. Like, yeah, yeah. And you know, like I'm not gonna run away from it. It is inspired, bro. Like it is. It it wasn't like made to be a callback, but. I did get it out, and that is what it is. You know what I mean? So, yeah, good yeah. catch, bro. Shout out to Bob Kane, still one of my favorite artists of all time. Always will be, honestly. Have you ever, like, talked to him, or, or like, has there been any connection there, or is it? No, nah, I don't even think he knows about me. Maybe he do, because I met a lot of people, like, who I listen to, and they're like, yo, you're cool, and I'm like, yo, I am. So, maybe he does, but... As far as I know, uh, nah, he hasn't, like, reached out or nothing. Um, I'm not, like, anticipating it, honestly, but if he did, that would be cool, you know what I mean? Is there anybody else in that realm, people you want to work with? Like, your personal, like, collabor collaboration grails, that came out so wrong. But, personal yeah. personal collaboration grails, I got one of them done on the two, no, one of them done on this trip, which was Mo Beretta, and then I got another nice. one done earlier this year, which was Hardo. We got an unreleased track with Ways on it. Then I've got, like, so many other ones. Some, like, pretty much all of these are attainable in some way, shape, or form, to my belief. Um, but, like, my other ones, would of course, be, like, no-brainer would be, like, Mike, Earl, all those people. But more specifically, like, Neonte, 454. Uh, even, like, up in St. Paul, like, Lorado, I would really like to collab. I've been listening to so much Lorado, like, 
too much. Like, those <laughs> what those used guys too are much. crazy, like Lorado, yes, Osiris, Cor- Corazon, and like all those people. Yeah, I've been listening to all of them like crazy. So pretty much all of them are on my collab list. And Lorado, he told me to send beats, and I didn't follow up, so I need to do that. Yeah, bro, Lorado's on there. Nolan, most definitely. That's why I mentioned him earlier. Um, one of my most favorite artists of all time. He got me into wearing like racer hats. I got my little oh, shop back hat. <laughs> yes, bro. I love that shit. There's the all I can think of. All I can think of. There's still a bunch more, but all I can think of. Yeah, <laughs> I think one of the most fruitful collaborations in my head for you in the past few years has been uh, Fear Dorian, who we talked about earlier. Bro, um, Dorian's like my best friend. Like, yeah, yeah. Love that. Bro. Like, love him, bro. Yeah. No, he's and he and he's also just going crazy right now. He's. Um, producing for a lot of cool artists, like making some of the best beats in that whole way. And he's in quote school. unquote jerk like, music or whatever. Like he's in class as we not as we speak, but he was in class today. Like Yeah. He's an active student. He's going this crazy. Like Can you speak to like that whole little whatever you want to call it scene that's happening with, with between Dorian, Xavier, like the one C people. I feel like all those heads are just like making it onto a lot of people's like next up like lists and stuff and just like getting a lot of hype right now so yeah yeah it's new it's it's all new it's a it's a it's an endless endless underground cycle that we've all seen since uh it reminds me a lot of the one that you were thing. part of yeah yeah it, it it's like that all the time it's like yo there's this new thing and we're gonna push the hell out of it because we never heard of it nothing nothing wrong with that by the way like that's just how shit goes and you know it has its exposure and it doesn't die out but it like solidifies into a legitimate genre or sound or swag or you know some kind of shit like that yeah this is just another one that we're experiencing and i guess it's like super dope because i get to witness it from a third person view i'm not i'm not like part of one c or nothing like that so it's super cool to see like how people similar to me are going up because it like reminds me of me in a way you know what i mean yeah and like they're just like killing it bro that sounded like some little bro shit i didn't mean it like that but (laughs) (laughs) no it's crazy because you're only 18 years old so the fact that you're speaking about one scene that scene as like a quote-unquote veteran is is it's just it's wild to me i don't know oh yeah bro and that that's crazy like i never thought about it like that that is true. Yeah. Even though I just explained it that way. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but I guess I never, like, it, it feels different having it spoken back to me. Because, like, yeah. it doesn't even feel like I've been here for that long. Like, yeah, it feels like it, it's been a quick four or five years. Exactly, yeah. Like, it feels like it's only been, like, one. I mean, so when yeah. I see, like, the, like, those, like, 1C and all them niggas, they doing this so big that, like, I don't know. They got they got low bro privileges on so many niggas. Like there's so many different waves of this shit that extends from deep depths of SoundCloud to front page on TikTok, you know what I mean? Like they got the whether it be the music itself, like the genre or whatever the fuck itself or the snare pattern. Like you 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 know those snare patterns like I don't know. I feel like we'll hear it in a mainstream song like coming up and it'll be an incredibly identifiable sound and then people will be like yo here's where it came from and then that's where the second wave or the third wave of people that are finding one c and all them will come from and that'll like really solidify them as like for life uh for life treasures i'll say that yeah for life like underground treasures you know what i mean yeah I guess being somebody who's gone through a lot of the stuff that these internet artists go through uh, when they blow up, do you have any advice for Xavier and some of these other people in that scene who are experiencing that right now? Honestly, no. Nah, they're taking it much better than I am, I'm assuming. Uh, I'd, I'd guess I would say to be open to anything, like be open to what anybody is going to say. Uh, that doesn't mean care about it, though, like, because... Just because someone's talking doesn't mean they're right. Just because someone says your music is ass and the tweet got a thousand likes doesn't mean that you're like it's all over for you, bro. Like, oh yeah, it's all over. Everybody hates you. You're a joke to the community. Like, no, it's not like that. It it just means that a thousand people didn't like 
what they were hearing and a thousand is a low ass number compared to how many of the people who won't tell you or show you that they don't like what they're hearing so you just got to keep that in mind like don't let the numbers that you see confuse you um like there's always going to be someone who doesn't like what you're doing but i feel like the people that like it is going to outnumber that by like three or four times almost always if it's like genuinely good shit uh by the majority standards so yeah yeah. you alluded to this earlier uh when talking about your backpacks contents but i know you've been getting more into graffiti and just tagging shit and, and and working on your craft there um how does that fold into your creative universe right now and what does that art form mean to you i made this video a long time ago about how sampling is like audio graffiti I just like the idea of taking a song and changing it like entirely. It's like taking sound waves and like bending it. So I I don't know. I feel like it ties into that. Like it ties like my graphics tie into my music a lot in that essence. The principle of things that were already there being altered for your satisfaction, such as a building that now has my tag on it or a sample that now has my drums on it, if that makes sense. That's the best way I can explain it graffiti is literally like sampling visually like you're using the building as your canvas you know yeah. what i mean the building the fence the van yeah. you know it's fun too like it gives you a reason to leave the crew it's yeah. super fun people are always like yo like why would you talk about your graffiti shit while showing your face to send a third uh i don't know you should take credit for cool shit more often i get if it's different if you have a nine to five or something like that because you need to protect your identity but At the current moment, I do not. And that'll probably be a very irresponsible decision regarding my future. But we will see. Life is an adventure. Anyways. um, (laughs) For now, this is a, uh, that was a great, that was a really great thought. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how it'll work in three weeks, but. Yeah. yeah, That was was real. Yeah, bro. Like, people got to just start taking credit for cool shit, bro. Like, don't be so scared, you know. What, who are some of your graffiti inspirations? My uncle. My uncle, Rome. Uh, up in Baltimore, he's a writer. Uh, those who know, like, they know, bro. Like, legendary, bro. Like, got me into that shit. Like, it's just so raw. Like, he showed me the graffiti music connection so early on. Especially with, like, mixtapes and shit. So, yeah. But he's, like, my number one inspiration. We should talk about this. You and Daze's tape. Mm-hmm. Uh, DSX FM. Yeah. How did that come together? Uh, so, all right, basically, he was like, yo, we should make a track. I was like, what about a B2 tracks? He was like, how about an EP? I was like, how about a tape? And that's how about that's that's how it was started. Basically, like we just dead ass asked each other, because <laughs> yeah. we always because I always plan on making a project with him, and I was like, yo, I think that would be pretty dope, and I did. So, yeah, great things happen because of that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, bro, it was dope to see him DJ at our show. He even brought up Mo, which was dope. Fucking uh. Yeah, shout out Days, bro. Every time I see him, like when he hugs me, he picks me up. <laughs> <laughs> he's such a just like a, gentle human. He, yeah, he's a so gentle real. giant, bro. Yeah. Like big ass dude. Gentle <laughs> as fuck though. Like I remember he came up to me before my set. He was like, Yo, like you need I need your set list. I was like, I got you, I'll text him to you. He was like, Yeah, cool. I got a SoundCloud downloader. Then he came to me like two, three minutes later while we was in market and he was like, Hey Quinn, I went to go download your songs off of SoundCloud. Just one problem. You uploaded all of your tracks as one continuous tape. <laughs> so now I can't download shit. And then he was like, luckily, I got a Spotify downloader. So next time, be prepared, nigga. I'm like, damn, I fall. <laughs> I'm like, damn, what? <laughs> bro, Yo. it was hilarious. Shout out Days, bro. The Days tape, is, I mean, that tape is is honestly, for how short it is, it's so it feels so substantive and like packed in with like good music and it's like the rare kind of short tape to me that doesn't miss and for that reason it feels like something a lot bigger than what it is Um, yeah and i guess i'm curious like how did you even approach like rapping on those songs because it's a lot higher bpm and 
I think you're you're almost writing hookier stuff on some of those tracks as well. When we was making the tape, I'm like, yo, like I really gotta lean into this whole energetic club sound. Like I really gotta lean. Not even I wouldn't even say club. I'd say like uh, that tape always reminded me of like street racing, like midnight club. So. I was like, I'm gonna heavily lean into that vintage sound since that's what we're going for. Cause it was inspired off of GTA 3's radio station, oh, which okay. is, uh, I forgot what it's called. It it isn't DSX FM. It's something some. It's some. I think it's SX FM. I think that's what it's called. And we just added the D because of Days. Do you feel like you and Days have more in the chamber as far as like that? That feels like a very fruitful collaboration to me. Just a lot of ideas being exchanged. I feel like we're never going to stop collabing. Like, I feel like we'll come together at times. Um, just, like, random times, like, just have ideas that will bounce off of each yeah. other's heads. That's going to get me to, like, start working more consistently. But when I'm, like, out here for real, then mm -hmm. that's when I'll start, like, working consistently. I have this kind of big question because I'm very curious about your perspective on about all this shit. Like, mm -hmm. obviously, like, there's like 18 million stories about how hip hop's like turning 50 and it turned 50 rather. And it's like the talk of the town and there's so many big concerts about it. But I feel like very few people have really asked the younger generation about what that means and if it means anything. And um, I guess I just to ask you the same question, like what, what do you hope for from like the genre's next 50 years? I hope people aren't so scared to be who they are. Cause like, I don't see none of that shit, like, at all. Like, the only people you ever see it in are the people who are rising above the traditional. Perfect example would be, like, going back to Xavier or 1C. Like, that's just who they are, bro. Like, they was doing that sound even when it wasn't, like, cool. You know what I mean? That's the definition of a pioneer, like... And it's not even for the sake of being a pioneer. It's just for the sake of being you. Niggas are so afraid of being laughed at. Like, niggas care so much about what someone else, like, who shares the same interests as them thinks. When it's like, like, that's not that's not how we were meant to live. Like, we're not meant to live to really care about how other people think. We're just meant to do our own thing. And how other people perceive it is just how they do. Like, we're we're putting out... We're, we're we're having fun and we're putting out art. We shouldn't let other people come in the way of that because that's what we do. So when people like get on that shit, like uh, how people are like mad reclusive in their interviews, but not even in a way that's like fucking uh, like funny or like not even in a way that it makes sense or like in a way that it's obvious that they're trying to reserve their poly privacy they're more so trying to maintain an image, like trying to say as least as possible, making the video like boring as fuck. Like I get that like bleak is some people's thing, but it shouldn't be in genres where energy is like asked for, you know what I mean? Like I'm mainly talking about like that opium shit. Yeah, um, I, I had a feeling. <laughs> yeah, I'm mainly talking about that opium shit. I, I just realized y'all had no idea what I was talking about. Oh, um, I feel like anybody who's watching this probably knows exactly what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, nah, like, all that, like, like, trust, like, all that, like, getting hype shit, like, yeah, that's, that's just dope. Like, make music, all that, like, get turned, like, why yeah. not? But then you got the all black fits, like, and... The the all black fits are like dope, like the fits and shit, the fashion behind it and all. It's all dope, but like, be yourself, bro. Like, don't be afraid to put your personality out there, cause a lot of people get on the camera and say jack shit. Like, they're just like, yeah, yeah, nah, yeah, 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 yeah nah. And they just like, and anytime they real will speak is when they're like mentioning someone else they know's name or something like yeah. that. Like, you know, this ain't no fucking like I don't know. Everything around that just feels incredibly julia foxified you feel me like <laughs> that's an amazing way of putting it yeah. that that's the only way i yeah. can accurately put it you can cut out everything i just said and just keep that <laughs> <in>. <laughs> yeah. i mean and then there's the flip side of it which i feel like is the i'm putting way too much of myself out there and to the point of everybody needs to know everything going on in my life yeah because this is all content my life's content and that's gonna push my music and 
I feel like you've done a really good job of maybe finding a balance between those things. The past yeah, there's weeks. an equilibrium. I was about yeah. to say that there's an equilibrium. Uh, people know a good deal of what I did on social media when I was on that shit heavily, but people have no idea what I'm like, what I'm, what I'm about to do when I walk out after we're done with this. Like that sounded ominous as fuck, but like, <laughs> like, like I just don't like telling people what I'm up to and stuff like that. Um, and that's just preference to keep music and life separate. I look at it as kind of a scale. Like, you've got to, like, undersharing and oversharing as an artist. And I feel like any average artist would fall between, like, that middle part where, like, you know a lot about them, but you don't know enough of them to plot their day or some shit like that or know where they hang out at or know where they live even. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? So, yeah, there's definitely an equilibrium. Yeah. Well, I hope you, like, continue to work on that and, like, find that perfect balance because it's, like, I feel like it's so important for your spirituality and for your mental health and all those words, so. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Quinn, I really appreciate you. Thank you. Yes, bro. Thank you for coming to the to the Nobel's studio. Nobel's studio. DIY. Bro. It's pretty chill here. It's pretty quiet. Yeah. Like, you hear the volumes we're speaking at. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>